26 of the Circle Back Podcast, the show where two great friends get together and just talk about video games. I'm Dan Lamarca. As always, I'm joined by Dan Dufernoy. You start first. I want to hear. <laughs> Usually you, you say, oh, wait. hey, everyone, oh, how wait. you doing out there? Hey, everyone. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Hope everybody had a nice Mother's Day. Hope your life's you good. You throw me off here, Dan. I'm sorry. Um, uh, so, I want to hear what you've been playing because okay. we're just two great friends who get together to talk about video games. You know, What is this? You're double introing right sometimes now? Sometimes we do a deep dive into one topic. Sometimes we don't. You know, so we're talking about what we're playing recently. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so, so. You're doing a bang up job here, Dan. Thanks, bro. I appreciate uh, that. I'm still playing Battletech. Um, loving it still. Really enjoying. Um, not really anything new to add to it. Um, getting near the end, I think. Yeah. I'm about 50 hours in. Damn. Finally coming to the end, <laughs> I think. Um, but yeah, that game is absolutely fantastic. I love it. Um, I've also been playing actually a newer game. It's new in a so. It's a game called Spy Party. Okay, it's not really a new game. Like he, this guy Chris Hecker that like runs this studio that makes Spy Party basically has been ha, has had this game in prototype since like 2011 or 12. Okay, and he's just working on it very slowly, figuring it out. He recently, I believe, middle of April launched it on steam and early access okay so it's kind of, of like of this year yeah it's kind of like a coming out party for it even though you were able to play it in like a super early beta form on spy party website for years 2011 no no that was like an early beta okay that was like a go to gaming outlets and show it off okay it way back then he was silent for a while, and then like a year or two ago, he was allowing people to play it on the website in like a really broken form with like bad art and like all this, you know, really basic game. And uh, now, just this, I think it was like April 16th or 23rd or something, uh, he released it on Steam Early Access, and uh, I started playing it. And I think it is a really, really cool and interesting game. Uh, I think they have a ways to go with it, but it, I'll, I'll explain what it is. Uh, it's a two-player competitive game, so it's one-on-one. -on -one. And the whole object of the game is one person is a spy, one person is the assassin. Okay. Right? The assassin's whole job is find the spy, shoot the spy. So the spy's job is to pretend like he's an AI because you're in this... You're in this party walking around in third person with, you know, 20 other AI characters, and you could be any one of them. Like, you get to, like, you know, choose who you're going to be out mm -hmm. of this group of people, and your job is to move around and, like, do certain tasks. Like, basically, the spy has a certain number of objectives that he has to complete, right? So, it'll be like... Okay, in this room, there are, like, statues all over, like, you know, three statues here, two over here, one in the back. And you're, you're tasked with re picking up one of the statues and replacing it with a different statue. Okay. Right? So, the, the assassin has a view of the entire party. You know, he can't see everything at once, but he, like, can change his perspective, like, move around. He's basically, like, picture, like, a sniper on a different building where he's, like, looking in at the side okay. of this building, yeah. right? So he has to kind of like keep an eye on everybody and he knows what the objectives are that the spy is trying to complete. So he's like watching the statues and being like, you know, oh, that one changed. Who was just near the statues? Like, you know, doing things like that. Um, another one is like uh, bug the ambassador. So there's somebody with a little triangle over their head that says ambassador, like the spy knows who it is and the assassin knows who it is. And to bug the ambassador, you have to be in a conversation like with other people and then you see like an arm movement like this, where he just like kind of puts it on the ambassador's like waist or uh -huh. something. And if this, if the assassin sees it, they're like, that's 100% the spy. Wait, who's the assassin and who's the spy? Like one person, human versus one person. Human. It's competitive game. But like, do you play with your friends? Do you play? Like, do you get to pick if you're the assassin or if you're? Yeah, the... it's it's like any competitive. It's like a fighting game. Like it's a competitive okay, gotcha. game. Like it's one v one. Okay. You know what I mean? I like, got gotcha you now. You can play with friends. You can play with randoms. You gotcha. know. Gotcha. But it's so the assassin is looking for not only the objective things because like another example would be there are like two suspected double agents, and. If the spy is in a conversation with one of the double agents 
and they, it, it's like this really funny voice line that's like obviously recorded by Chris Hecker. It's like way out of place because the whole ambient noise is like, rah, 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 you know, like like crowd noise. And then you'll just hear someone say, banana bread. <laughs> and then you know that, okay, someone that's in a conversation right now is the spy. Okay. So if you see somebody like checking their watch in the corner or looking at statues, you can like rule them out. And they actually have a system like highlighting and low lighting. So if, you, if you're like, I know for a fact that person's not the spy because they weren't in, in a conversation during the banana bread, low light them. Oh, that's cool. And it makes them like less visible to you. Like it just darkens their like profile. You know what I mean? So it's super like in depth, but it has a lot going for it. And it's really, really cool. The, the, the layer that's actually even more interesting than looking out for the objectives is moving like an AI. So when you're the spy, mm -hmm. you see visibly there are these like circles on the ground like this. Okay. And those are like conversation pads. So the AI always will do something and then walk to a pad. So you'll see like, okay, this, this AI walks over to this pad that's on the bookshelf, takes out a book, looks at it, puts it down, may look at another book, but then they walk immediately to another pad, whether it's at the window, whether they're checking their watch, whether it's at the bar, so they're grabbing a drink. They, they never stop where there's no pad for them to be at. You know, okay. like think of it like scripting AI, right? You would never just have somebody, like a computer character, walk into the middle of the room and stand there and then walk back. So you as the spy need to never do something that would out you as not being an AI, you know? So yeah. you're like, you're constantly thinking like, if a perfect example of this is like, I told you about the conversation pads. Mm -hmm. So in order to banana bread or plant a bug on the ambassador, you need to be on one of those conversation pads with whatever characters you're trying to interact with. But if you walk up to the conversation pad and you just like stop just a little bit short, of the pad yeah you can't like this is like a super specific example but it's one that happens all the time you can't like then be like oh shit i'm not close enough to the ambassador and like jiggle up a little bit to get closer because an ai would never walk up somewhere and, and then just twitch forward yeah you know and if the assassin sees you do that you're out dead giveaway okay so like the actual shooting from the assassin to the spy isn't like a third isn't like a first person shooter where you're like, oh, I gotta be really skillful at shooting. It's like, hey, just literally aim at this guy. They walk slowly, hold shift, click, and then they're dead. You know, it's like, you really the game is figuring out who it is and then naming them. Pretty. That's much. awesome. And so every game is different each time, or like. Yeah, so there, it's totally customizable. Like you can change the level. There's like you know twelve different levels or something. You can change the objectives. You have like. 20 objectives to choose from mm -hmm. of like what the spy has to do you change the time limit the amount of guests in the in the party like everything is customizable cool so the, the jankiness of it comes from this is an early access game i haven't encountered any bugs in game like the actual game is really solid but the system if i showed you like the freaking the way it looks to like being a lobby it looks like it's from, like, 1995, like, you know, trying to find people to chat with online, like a chat room, where it's, like, this huge log on the left with, like, text that looks like... Ah, uh, the good old days of yeah, 1995. But, it, but it's, like, and then you'll see over here all the players that are in that lobby, and you can just click on their name and invite them to play. All right, So, cool. like, there's no matchmaking system right now. Yeah. It's just lobby system. And the thing that I'm a little bit worried about is there are not a lot of players on, like... In the main lobby, there are like 60 to 80 players. And then it's like, you go to a different lobby that's like 10, you know. There's probably like, anytime I've been on, like a maximum of like 150 players. But playing. the game's not actually out yet. This is early access. Yeah, it's early access. But it is kind of its coming out party. You okay. know what I mean? Like, the first time it's, it's being shown and given to the majority of people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really sought it out and registered on their website earlier, yes, you could have played it. But this is kind of its big... Into, gotcha. you know, and you've been following the, it since it came out in 2011? 2011? I've been hearing about it. I haven't been like, you know, looking for it all the time, yeah. but like I, I knew what it was. I was, you know, hearing about it and stuff, but um, it's a such, such a good concept and such a solid mechanical thing. Okay. It, and 
the thing about it is I think it in the state that it's in right now, and again, it's not finished, it's far from finished, but in the state that it's in right now, I think it loses its luster if you're not playing with friends. Mm. Okay. Because either you're playing against people that are not good at the game and don't understand the game, or you're playing against people that are way better than you and just destroy you. So there are occasions when you play against someone that's evenly matched, you have a really good match, that's great, but it's like... You know, I don't know if that's just me with competitive games and that's how it works yeah. because that's the same reason I get frustrated with fighting games is, like, I can't find somebody that's actually my level, you know? Like, I find them that are way better than me and worse, yeah. you know? And it feels good to beat someone that's worse than you sometimes, but it gets boring, you know? That's why I think playing with a friend while on, like, voice chat, maybe. That's cool. Will be really cool. What's, like, the skill level, though, for, like, a game like Spy Party where, like, are people that good where, like, you'll just, like, two seconds in, they, they catch you and then... It it is very a very high skill level because there is so much nuance to moving as the spy. I would say as the assassin, it's either you're good at finding out who it is or you're not. Like you know, you you can learn different ticks and what yeah. to look for. But the real skill is being the be spy because you can be super obvious getting at the statues, and the whole time when you're the spy, you see the laser dot sight of the assassin. So you know where they're looking. So you kind of use that. Like if I'm the assassin, sometimes I'll use that to bait out. Like if I see somebody by the statues, I'm like, oh, I think that's him. I'll like put the laser over here so that I can just barely see him on my screen. And then when they start like running over doing weird things. Well, I see them pick up the statue and it'll change in their hands. If I see it, it be like right back to them. And they're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. That's awesome. It's a really, really good game. I, I would absolutely recommend it, but... Like I said, it, it's not finished. I think it has the potential to be really, really good and popular game. Mm -hmm. um, it has to come out on consoles, I think. And, and they might be planning that. I don't know. But I think the big limiter here is going to be, hey, it's a niche PC game yeah. that right now doesn't have a lot of people playing it. So that doesn't always necessarily bode well for the future of it. But I really enjoy it so far. Um, again, I'm kind of... You know, I'm not, like, going out of my way to play it every day. Right. Like, I'll jump in for a game or two, whatever. But if I had a friend, or, like, a couple friends to play with or something, I think it would be a really cool Awesome, game. dude. Yeah. That sounds really cool. That yeah. sounds really interesting. I'd be interested to play that. It's cool. Totally, you man. You should check it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. So, I know you have been playing a game that we've all played recently. Yes. And uh, both Shelby and Dan both beat. And I'm really, truly, really trying to beat it. Um, <laughs> I'm still playing God of War. It, you know, I, I finally got uh, some free time to uh, get a few more hours into it. I'm loving it uh, even more. Um, I thought there was that cool dragon scene where you're in the dragon's mouth. And mm -hmm. I, spoiler alerts, so I got the Blades of Chaos and all that stuff. <laughs> That's a huge spoiler. Well, that's why I said spoilers. But it, <laughs> what is that? Wait, I said that's why I said spoilers. Uh huh. That's how that works. Usually, we're very careful about spoilers, uh, exactly. and we're also like having a spoiler cast about this game. I don't know why you just say that huge spoiler, but sorry out there, guys. Did we have to edit that out? Maybe. <laughs> well, you get the. So I'm up to that. Part. <laughs> anyway, I'm up to that part. Yeah, you don't have to tell everyone where you're at. Just like talk about what you've been thinking of the game. I'm thinking it's great. It's really cool. I like all of this. Stuff. You're like freaking out over it. It's crazy. I got the, uh, I got the, I got, I like the nostalgia aspect of it, you know, like, uh -huh. that's really, really cool because that's something that was in the original game. You know, why don't you just like, <laughs> just talk about what you like about the game. You don't have to talk about specifics. I talk, I came on awesome. this show and that talked about God of War for like 20 minutes without saying any spoilers. So that was really cool. I like that nostalgia aspect because that was in the... Do you like anything about the game? Do you have anything in particular to talk about that you're enjoying about it? Any anything that you would say is a good part of the game? And any not not like story beats, like any mechanics, any characterization, anything that you're enjoying or I not like, enjoying? I like all the characters. The characters are really cool. Okay, I enjoy the characters. I gotta say, the combat. I'm having some issues with the combat. I think it's a little. Uh, it's a little. You know, I feel like I'm. At certain aspects, I'm like in. You know, walking through mud. You know, I feel like okay. it's just very, like, a lot of combat, a lot of people thrown at you at one time, mm -hmm. and, you know, you get one wave of enemies, and then you gotta do another wave of enemies, so it kind of gets, like, a little, uh, a little cumbersome, a little tedious okay. after a while, but, um, other than that, I'm enjoying it very, very much. Cool, cool. Um, if, if you see a random cut, I'm sorry, but we might have to cut out some of the stuff that Dan said. Uh, 
I've Listen, been playing, I'm very excited and hyped about I've been this playing game. lots of other games. Um, <laughs> one in particular that is one of my favorite games of all time that I've been just decided to dip back into since I have that Super Nintendo Classic, uh, Link to the Past. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, I was like, I really feel like just doing a playthrough of Link to the Past. So I, I beat like a couple dungeons I've been going through, having fun with it. That game is just so fantastic. That's a classic. But it holds up in the in the same way we talk about like Super Mario World and stuff like in Super Metroid. It's like that that type of game. Like they had such a quality of game at that time mm-hmm. that it it's just such a superb game. Um, two other games I've been playing that I have a long history with both of these games actually. Um, but I recently I think it was I played Spy Party and got like a an itch for some competition. But I was kind of like, ah, eh, Spy Party, like it's fun, but it's not, it's not really scratching that itch. So I jumped back into Dota 2, actually. Okay. And uh, you know, I've told you before, I have like over a thousand hours played in this game. Like, played a ton of this game, but um, it has been a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And um, we just, I feel like we just talked about Dota 2 not too long ago. Uh, did we? I think so. I, I think I played like a little bit, but nothing nothing serious. But this game is just so it it is so unmatched in the in the amount of like competitive depth that there is to that game. Like the fact that there are 130 or whatever heroes and like so much variety and from game to game, even if you play the same hero and depending on who you're going up against, like. It's just such a good game. I, I'm I'm nervous to play any more of it because I know I'll get hooked back into it in a hard, in a big way. But um, I've enjoyed my time with it lately. Uh, game that I w- I will talk about a lot here because I actually haven't. I don't believe I've ever talked about it on the podcast. The game called Subterfuge. Have I ever told you about this? I no? don't. I mean, the name sounds. From, that's not the one. Subterfuge. What was the one that you were just playing earlier? Or something. It was like Space Punk or something like that. Or Frost Punk. Frost Punk. No. Not that one. Subterfuge is a phone game, actually. Okay. And it oh is... wait, yeah, no. When I when I came over uh, last week, it was on your phone where you have to you have the submarines and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was playing it last week. Really? Playing it last week. Wow. I've been playing a lot. Oh, sorry. Um, I no, no. It was probably. What do you mean? <laughs> that was on Friday, probably. And okay. Yeah, because I was like, a game usually doesn't last more than a week, and I just started. But um, subterfuge is. It's a game on your phone where it's kind of, it's most comparable to Risk. It's like a big strategy, almost like a board game type of thing, where it's you and either, you know, there's either eight players, ten players, six players, whatever size game you choose. Um, they're all real players, no AI. And uh, the whole point of the game is that you have these bases. So you start out with, I think, four or six bases. Mm-hmm. And then you basically send out your like army basically on these submarines that go from one base to another. So in the beginning, there are a bunch of like dormant outposts, and everyone is tr- kind of like, all right, I'm taking all the outposts that are near me, and then we'll see what happens. So like everyone's in a mad rush to try to get whatever outposts they can without starting a war. And uh, the way it works is it takes. It, the reason that I like this game on my phone is because a lot of games that I that you play on your phone are they demand a lot of attention, like at one time. Like it's like, all right, if I'm gonna sit down and play a game for an hour, I don't want to be doing it on my phone because there's probably a more enjoyable, enriching experience yeah. on another platform that I could play. Where subterfuge is, if I want my subs to go from one outpost to another it might take 12 hours, real time. So you're kind of like setting up all these moves ahead of time, sending out your subs and kind of going about your business and then be like, oh, let me check it out, see what's going on, anything changed, whatever. You get notifications. But the real interesting part of it is the diplomacy because because it's eight or 10 real human players, you're in constant like negotiations with each other. So it's like you're forming alliances, breaking alliances, to having people in the back. Like it's just crazy. There's there are very few things that give you this kind of experience, and that's why I say it really makes it feel like a long-term board game, mm-hmm. um, where 
you know, obviously you go to war with other people, you send, you know, when you send your armies into another person's base, you know, whoever has a bigger number wins, but the level of strategy when you're trying to attack, like you're basically say this person's here, I'm here, I have an ally here. This person, the person I'm trying to attack doesn't know that this person's my ally on their, you know, eastern border. So I attack from the south. They bring all their troops over to me to try to fight this war. Now the eastern front is wide open and my ally goes in and attacks. You know, it's like, it, it gives you that feeling of like an actual tactical competitive game. Like where you're, where you're actually making smart decisions. Mm-hmm. Like, like it is like war games, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you're actually trying to do yeah. real tactics. And, and it's just, it's really rewarding. And if you're, if you can buy into it and have fun with it, it's just so cool to like. Are you still playing it though? Yeah, you still, or did you beat it? There's no beating it. Or just you continue. It's a competitive continue. game. Yeah. You know, it's like anything, if you ever beat Street Fighter 2, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't beat it, you play yes, more matches. I crush Street Fighter But you know what I'm saying? It's Turbo. like, yeah, you can't, you don't beat it, you, you play it. So it's like Dota 2, you can play it forever. There's no beating it, you just get better and better and mm-hmm. smarter. And, you know, every game's so different because one game you might have three out, three strong allies and you guys all take, take medals at the end or whatever, but... You know, there's a lot of depth to the game that I'm not explaining, like with specialists and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm not going to dive too deep into it. I just think it is, if you like board games with strategy, like Risk or Catan or something like mm-hmm. that, it's like, this definitely scratches that itch. And uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's awesome, Going dude. back to it. Because yeah. like I said, I, I used to play this game a lot. I stopped for a while and I just jumped back and it's it's been really fun. Cool, man. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much all we've been playing. Um, I'm very excited to hear from Dan about Metal Gear Solid 2. I Let's jump it. to Metal Gear Corner with Dan. Very much spoilers. I'm going to spoil this game for, hard. I, Dan, I think for this, they expect to be spoiled <laughs> since you, every week we talk about... <laughs> also, this is a 17-year-old game. Yes, that's true. Um all right, so let's hear. All right. Where, where do we live off last time? Well, last we left off, right, um, we had to find the president, mm-hmm. right? Because the president, well, he had the detonation codes. So that means that the president was in cahoots with, with Solidus and, and, and all these people. So we needed to go find the president. Now, the only reason I'm clarifying is because I've had to clarify this in my head like 17 times because it is a little convoluted as we know the Metal Gear games are, right? Mm-hmm. So I just need you to clarify me if I'm wrong, maybe for our lovely viewers at home as well right you have big shell right yeah. the united states government is working on big shell yeah. right you got the russian terrorist organization working on big shell you have solidus so trying to take over big take shell. over big shell but you also have solidus yeah. and dead shell working together what is it sans frontiers or whatever what's his what's his organization gone well who is solidus oh well, we'll get to that you find out who the solidus is um and then, uh, but then you also have the Patriots, right? So Solidus and the Patriots don't like each other, right? So it's like this whole, like, and Raiden is just kind of thrown in the middle of, mm-hmm. of all this, right? Did I get that right? So far, Okay. Right. Yeah. So you find the president because Metal Gear was activated. And um, what you have to do is you have to find him before, like, he, like, actually confirms the new Metal Gear mm-hmm. um, because then you have nuclear annihilation. I wanted to just note this part out because it was really, really weird you're walking along like this path, and I'm not. But like, I just have to just mention this. The guy, one of the guards, goes like, "Oh, like, I gotta go to the bathroom. No one's gonna see me." And he starts peeing. And legit, you walk. You're like, you're like sidling across a wall, and like legit, his pee stream is like, <laughs> you're like peeing on you. Johnny Sasaki, man. <laughs> Wait, the, was that Johnny Sasaki? <laughs> is that the same guy? It's okay. Us. All right. Well, Any, I re- anything bathroom related? Johnny <laughs> Sasaki. Okay. At least in his lineage. Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, so I'll be hearing more from him in the other games, apparently. Absolutely. Oh, Johnny Sasaki. Anyway, so you find the president, right? So you, you run into him after this whole complicated thing. You get to the president, and he tells you about the Patriots. And what you find out is, is that the Patriots actually run the entire country. Like nothing that happens in America is done through any sort of free will. It's like this head secret organization of like 12 people called the Patriots, and they run everything. So whoever's president, that's just a figurehead. 
when there's like an accident on TV that's orchestrated, what song is, you know, number one on the Billboard Top 200, the Patriots organize. They organize absolutely everything. So the, the Patriots, they're the, they're the puppet masters of everything that happens in the country. You find out that they put Solidus Snake as president. His name was George Sears or something like that. That is right. And you find out that they put him as president, um, and then they decided that they didn't like him or something like that. So they cut him out. So Solidus is really, really pissed off about that, and he just wants power. And his Solidus's line of thinking is, is he wants you know he wants to create a true democracy, a true society. The whole idea of like Manhattan like taking over and just creating like a true republic, mm-hmm. um, and getting rid of the Patriots. So the Patriots and Solidus are kind of going like this. But um, you also find out that he was part of the Les Enfants Terribles. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, thing where they took, they took Big Boss and they cloned his DNA. So that's where you get Solid Snake and that's where you get Liquid Snake. Um, Solid Snake is also an addition to that. Mm-hmm. So there's three brothers, right? Ah. Ah. So anyway... What, um, what Silas wants to do, he wants to send the nuke to destroy Wall Street and kind of uh, start all over again. And I think we, I mentioned this, um, the new Metal Gear is called Arsenal Gear. And it's actually Big Shell. Big Shell was just a big cover-up for Arsenal Gear. I think we brought that up last time. Anyway, um, so what happens is he says, all right, you have to find this. Uh, the only person on Big Shell that can actually deactivate Arsenal Gear is this girl named Emma Emmerich. And you're like, wait a second, Emmerich, isn't that, isn't Otacon's name Hal Emmerich? So I wonder if there's a relation. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, while the president's telling you all this, um, he says, you know, there's one last thing that you have to do. You have to kill me. And Ryan's like, what? What are you talking about? And Ocelot shows up and kills the president. So the president is Benito. And Ocelot, you know, says, see you around, boy, and like heads out. So um, what Ryan has to do is he has to find Emma. And before he goes to find Emma... You hear this whole thing, how, like, uh, she, she's scared of water or something like that because of she dr- her dad drowned with her when she was a kid. And you find out that Otacon is her brother. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get this, this more later. And this is where this game totally lost me. Um, where he goes, he goes, like, I tried to save her, but I couldn't. I was in my room doing... And then, like, he cuts out. You're like, what the fuck is happening here? So anyway, excuse my language. Um, so you're going to go find Emma. And in the meantime, there's a vamp fight. Vamp shows up. Uh-huh. He pops out of the water and he does some cool dance moves. And you fight Vamp. And I took your advice. I've been doing, I did the no oh, yeah. lethal kills. But he, he still, they still, like, die anyway. Like, yeah, it's... It's probably just for, like, complete... We'll talk about that afterwards. So anyway, so you fight Vamp. You find Emma, right? It's Otacon's sister. And she's super scared of water, and the whole big shell is flooding, so you got to put her on your back, and you got to swim her through. Mm-hmm. Um, then the, then uh, Vamp shows up again. You're trying to protect her as she's trying to get to Otacon and Snake for safety, mm-hmm. and Vamp shows up. Again, you thought you, you defeated him, but you didn't. He shows up, and you got to snipe him, but it's too late. Emma already has so much damage. She's bleeding through her torso. She runs into, she sees Otacon. One last time, Snake is there, you're there, and uh, there's this whole touching scene where she looks at Otacon, because you're this whole, the entire time, all she keeps seeing is she wants to see Otacon again, uh, that's her big brother, and she hasn't seen him for a long time, and, you know, she misses him, kind of thing, and he holds her, and he just kind of, like, confesses everything that happened, and this is where, like, it just completely, like, lost me. Like, apparently, and the way that it's set up is, you see like all these like photographs of them as kids and they have like this really, really sad music and he just does this whole thing where he's like, I fell in love with our stepmother and she seduced me. And while she was seducing me, dad drowned and you almost drowned too. And I'm just like, I'm just, I really, really, I, so bad. it really, really lost me. So, bad. so you find out that the dad actually committed suicide because Otacon was having a relationship with his stepmom, which in turn made Emma scared of water because she was drowning. It's some serious like, <laughs> signs shit. <laughs> it's like, it's like so bad. The water. Like, yeah, like so bad. Swing away. Oh my gosh, so bad. So anyway, so after that horrible thing, and Emma dies in Hell's arm, and she's like, call me Emma one last time. So he does. 
she dies, and then there's this whole scene where, like, the bird that she was taking care of just goes like, How? How? I miss you. I miss you. It's just really, really bad. So that all happened, right? So we got that. Uh, Did I explain that well enough? I don't know if I did. It was perfect. Okay. Absolutely perfect. So, all right. So... How, uh, because Emma knew the codes, she had this virus that she could implant into Arsenal Gear. So now you have it, and you're going to go destroy Arsenal Gear. But Emma's dead after that whole fiasco. Anyway, so Cyborg Ninja shows up, Mm -hmm. right? And you're like, oh my gosh, it's Cyborg Ninja. Turns out that it's actually not our friend uh, Gray Fox. It's actually Olga Mm -hmm. from the beginning of the game. Um, who uh, is dressed up as Cyborg Ninja, and she's working with Snake, and they both knock you out. And you're like, oh my gosh, like, they turn, like, Ryden at one point goes like, oh no, like, what the heck? Like, I thought we were on the same side. And Snake goes like, I never said I was on your side. And, like, Ryden gets, like, knocked out. So this is where this is where it gets interesting, and this is where I totally see, like, why, like, what this game did, at least this specific point, I thought was really, really cool. Yeah. So Ryden's just, like, hanging there naked. And Olga, the, you know, it's very much like in the first Metal Gear where Snake's hanging there. And everybody's in there looking at his naked body. Solidus comes in, and you hear a little bit of Ryden's backstory that he was, uh, he was actually like a super soldier when he was a kid. And Solidus took him under his wing, mm-hmm. and he was just like the best soldier he was. So like, Ryden kind of, well, well, Solidus, at least he's Ryden as like a son, yeah. surrogate kind of thing. Um, and Ryden's just a soldier... Prodigy and Solidus just keeps going on about how you know how the Patriots suck and how he's gonna create like a new society um, but uh, Ryden is just a pawn and What what happens next is it was what I really really enjoyed about the game and Maybe actually the only thing I enjoyed about the game um, So Ryden is completely naked Olga comes in and then she's like listen like I, we had to pretend that we were double-crossing you So just like Solidus had no idea what was going on so mm-hmm. Snake and Olga were on Ryden's side She frees Ryden Ryden's completely naked, mm-hmm. and he's got to go through this whole, like, area with enemies and stuff like that, completely naked. So mm-hmm. he's holding on to his junk, and he's, like, running. Did you do some of the moves where he, like, <laughs> yeah. and does But this is where the game gets, like, really, really cool, and this is where, like, I was, like, really, really trippy. So you're going through all these places, right? You're going through all these doors, and these enemies are, like, coming after you, and, like, these weird things will start to happen. So, like, at one point, like, you go into a place, and it'll be, like, you know, strut L, stomach. Strut B, colon. Mm-hmm. And then, like, it'll be, like, New York, 52nd Street. And then out of nowhere, there'll be, like, a picture of, like, a woman sleep, like, a, like, a video of, like, a woman sleeping in the corner. And in the meantime, the colonel just keeps calling you. And he keeps saying these real, I have Crazy some, things, some, right? some weird things. Like, he'll, he'll be, like, first he'll be, like, I think you should really turn off the game. Like, you've been playing a really long time. Turn off the game. And then Rose will call you, and Rose will be, like, you're playing too close to the TV. Turn off, turn off. The colonel will come up again, and like he'll have like this skeleton-looking face, mm-hmm. and he'll be like, "When you need to prune, make sure you wear glo- glo- gloves." And then he'll go off, and then he'll come up again. He'll be like, "When you do, when you do, I need scissors, sixty-one." And then like <laughs> he'll go on, like really, really, really weird stuff. But that stuff is awesome, isn't it? That, is the, I love that was the that best. Part. That was the best part. And some of the best is when like they would talk about their first game, and like the colonel would be like, "Hurry up, sniper wolf! You need a PSG one. Mm-hmm. Save Merrill, like mm-hmm. things like that." Mm-hmm. So that was really, really cool. Really, really trippy. Um, and that's where like Bryden like the complete breakdown. And this is where the game gets really, really crazy. And this is where I totally see what you're talking about. You find out that uh, Rose, who your girlfriend is, was actually a spy, and she was ordered to keep an eye on Raiden. She's a spy for the Patriots. Mm-hmm. And you also feel, you also learn that the Colonel is not, re- like, all of this whole thing was actually not real. Mm-hmm. This was all just one big uh, charade to turn Raiden into a super soldier. So that's mm-hmm. why the Colonel is saying all these weird things, also harking back to what he said on the Shadow Moses incident. Because it was all just one program to make right Ry- to make Raiden become the next Snake, pretty much. So Snake comes back, Raiden's freaking out, and Snake's like, "Listen, like, don't worry about the past, don't worry about anything. I'm real. Just stick with me. We're gonna get through this. No problem." He gives Raiden back his clothes, um, but also still cool stuff. Where like, you're running running with Snake, and first off, Snake's like a, like a complete like. Badass, like oh, yeah. I mean, like you're like you have like this one gun and you're trying to shoot one enemy and then and then time it takes you to shoot one enemy. He's snakes already got like twenty people. Yeah, yeah he, like I think it, 
I saw an interview with Kojima. They do such a good job. Afterwards, where Kojima was like, he wanted you to, like, you played a snake in the first game, and he wanted to show you, like, really how great Snake is in the second game. Be like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you're playing right, you're playing a beginner, and, like, Snake is just the best around. But things were like, you keep dying. But then there'll be, like, weird stuff, like, you know when you die, there's, like, the death screen mm -hmm. where it's, like, mission failed? It'd be, like, fishing mailed. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to emit instead of exit, like, weird yeah. stuff when you're still alive? Just further elaborating on the point that this was all in Raiden's head. Raiden's going nuts. Mm -hmm. And this is all just one big uh, charade. Anyway, so Snake helps uh, Raiden. Um, Colonel isn't real. It's all illusion. Everything's an illusion. Um, so at this point, you run into Fortune again. And Snake's fighting Fortune. And Snake tells Raiden to go away. Um, and that's where Raiden runs upstairs. And that's when you fight. There's like three huge Metal Gears that you have to fight. Um, Olga pops in to help you, and then she sacrifices herself. She's dead. Mm -hmm. um, Snake comes back in, captured by Fortune, mm -hmm. right? Um, but what's good is is that Otacon put in the virus that Emma had, so the Metal Gear started to uh, to malfunction. Yeah. So now Solidus is pissed. All he wanted to do was the names of the Patriots. Again, he wanted to destroy... Uh, the Patriots, so he can have uh, absolute uh, control. So, then Ocelot shows up, right? So right now, Olga's dead, Emma's dead. It's you, Otacon, Snake, and Solidus, right? And Otacon shows up. Oh, no, Where, Otacon. Where's Fortune? Oh, Fortune's still there, too. And um, Ocelot shows up. Ocelot gives this... I don't know, these cutscenes are made long, so it's hard to... Oh, yeah. like. There's a so... Crazy. Ocelot gives this whole speech... About how, again, this was all a charade, that he wanted to see how good Raiden was, so he set up everything like Shadow Moses. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Ames died, like, uh, the DARPA chief died, and, mm -hmm. you know, the president died, like, everything was set up. He even mentioned about how the people of Deadshell, Fortune, Vamp, Fat Man, he only got them because he called them freaks, like Foxhound was, like Psycho Mantis and, and stuff like that. Like, he just wanted to do a complete simulation to see how good uh, Raiden was. was yeah. So, as that's happening, Ocelot's giving his speech. Even Fortune. Fortune's like, how come I can't die? And Revolver Ocelot, he takes his, like, revolver and shoots her. And, like, he hits her. He says the whole, like, you're invincible thing. Like, I, I did that. Like, I made you invincible. And he shoots her. And she's, like, dying. Yeah. So, like, it was all just... It, the whole game was just one big uh, hoax. Um, so, Fortune is dead. Or you think she's dead? No, she's dead. She's dead, right? Did you die? I think so. She's definitely dead. Um... And then our favorite character shows up. Ocelot gets into the big arsenal gear and he starts getting like good crazy. And you hear, hello, brothers. <laughs> and like his arm gets all like big and jacked. Uh -huh. um, Liquid is back in a way. Um, and then uh, Solidus is pissed off. Solidus is pissed off and uh, Ocelot like gets away. So everybody's like, wait a second, we got to take care of ocelot he's getting away mm. but solidus doesn't care solidus wants to kill raiden he's like super pissed off at raiden so as snake and otacon and them are going after ocelot you're left to deal with solidus and again solidus goes on to his big speech about how you know he just wants to you know april and where is this this was right it was like on top of like big shell and yeah. as this happens you're on are you on big shell or you're on somehow this is where I'm getting a little foggy. Somehow you're on like a ship and you go like right under the George Washington Bridge and you end up in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Somehow you end up in Manhattan. Is Big Shell mobilizing or do you go on something else or do you go on a do you ship? Know, do you know the answer? No, I don't remember. I, because I know Arsenal Gear was like Big Shell, so maybe it just kind of turned into... Did it start moving? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I remember you end up about crashing into the George Washington Bridge and you're in Manhattan. Ocelot's going on his way and Snake... Is after mm -hmm. is after him, so you're left with Solidus, and again Solidus is is he's pissed at you. He also tells you that he killed your parents, mm -hmm. and that's when Ryan gets pissed. You also find out the whole time Rose keeps talking about April thirtieth, and you know oh, what day is today, and like mm -hmm. you think it's like probably their anniversary or something like that. No, you find out it was the day that George Washington became the first president of the United States in 1789, and Solidus wanted to take this day to become president and yeah. and start all over. So anyway. 
Right? It's like, I'm not going to fight you. Like, you know, I'm nobody's pawn. Like, you want me to kill you, but I'm not going to do that. I am nobody's pawn. And then Solidus tells him that he killed um, Raiden's parents. So which Raiden freaks out. You have a boss fight with Solidus. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Solidus is all like Dr. Octopus. Yeah, like, he's got like these, arms, like, yeah, he's yeah. got these arms things. Um, you fight him. I tried to do no kill, but still you end up killing him anyway. He gets knocked off the building. Solidus dies. And, you know, Raiden is left to reflect right at the, where is it, the Capitol building or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's just, or not the Capitol, that's in Washington. Hey, so he's somewhere important in, in New York. Yeah, and he's, I know the building. I feel what it's and like, it. he's just looking around and, you know, all these people start walking towards him like nothing ever happened so that kind of makes you question if like this was all just like one big like ruse so snake shows up in a crowd of people and runs like snake like what's what the hell's going on and snake's like listen like whatever just happened like you need to just start over you need to start fresh you need to you know forget everything that you know your past isn't you you know whatever he said look at your dog tags and his dog tags said like dan so like you don't even know if he's jack if he's dan like you don't know who the hell this guy is or like what's going on he's like legit going crazy and snake just says listen you just need to start from the beginning whatever happened here like don't worry and Ryan's like no i'm gonna come with you we're gonna go get ocelot and like snake's like no like, like yeah. i'm gonna take care of ocelot don't worry about it you just like start your life again start from fresh towards that point snake disappears and Ryan turns around and there's rose and he goes up to rose and like he gives her like a hug and a kiss and she's like accept me for who I am, will you? And then he goes on this whole speech about how, like, you know, I've learned something, Rose. It's not our DNA that makes us us. We have to teach our children about culture, history, <laughs> love, and compassion. And that's how the game freaking ended. Mm-hmm. And then it's over. And I don't know, man. Like, that whole scene with, like, him going nuts was really, really cool, but as a whole... You don't think it made up for anything? Oh, man, I feel very me, disappointed so, in this game. I don't know if I missed anything, though. I might have, like... I even wrote my notes. This sucks. I don't know if I, uh... Yeah, the... I mean... Oh, April 30th was also the day they... Oh, I just spit. I got so excited. <laughs> um, April 30th was also the day that they met, apparently, too. Yeah. But, I don't know, man. I just... The... So, the thing for me with this game is, number one, it's not my favorite Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do think it's important, and I think that, me personally, I liked the bosses and the characters a lot, Mm -hmm. and so when it led to that end part, I thought that was, like, amazing, obviously, the whole thing where he's going crazy, and all the Campbell stuff, like, awesome. I think the solid fight is really cool. I think the characters around this game... And that whole part are the game. That's the reason. Well, that whole game. part was like amazing. Like that part was. But for me, like when I was playing it at first, and and here's where the difference comes when you played it, whether you played it at the time or or now, is it wasn't as frustrating to play back then because you didn't have much to compare it to. Okay. Yeah. So it it was kind of like you accepted that that games like that played like that. So. It, if you take that part out, that's why people love this game yeah. so much. You know what I mean? It's like, because even when you went back and played one, it's super frustrating. Mm-hmm. You just happen to like the story of one yeah. better. Yeah. No, which made true. the game better. You know? So if you take out the frustration for this, the problem is this one's a lot longer mm-hmm. and it drags on a lot. And some of the parts are fucking weird. Like that whole, like you said with Emma and Hal and stuff, it's like, what the yeah, where is this coming from? Yeah. But the first game had shit like that too. You, you just overlooked it because you really appreciated it. Yeah. So I, I always have been in the camp of two is on the lower end for yeah. me, but I still really like that game and I appreciate it for it. Well, I just still have so many questions. So like, and I, I might have missed some stuff. So please forgive me for anybody that's like super like into it. Like I really could have missed because like I thought Rose was part of the Patriots. So like, why are they together now? Like. Yeah, the... Like, what's the point? Like... Yeah. Where did Ocelot go? Like, what was really the whole point of all of it? It was just... It was Ocelot just trying to, like, but the create a super soldier. But the reason you don't know any of that is because they have games that are set after this game. Yeah. You know? So, like... They leave the open threads on purpose. Yeah. Because... They want... You know, a lot of these characters are in... Battle Your Solid 4. Yeah. In the future. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like... They'll, like, cover it up. They'll kind of fill in some of the blanks, and uh, 
There's yeah. no, not all of them, but... <laughs> yeah, will Metal Gear Solid fill, fill, fill in the blanks for me? Yeah. Because, like, I want to know what happened to Ocelot. Yeah. So, really, so just... Ocelot is a main character in Metal Gear Solid 4. Okay. And that's in the future. Well, it's like, just make it very easy for me. This whole thing was Ocelot's attempt to turn Raiden into a snake. Yes. Yes. And again, I don't want to say too much because you're about to play through the rest of them. Okay. Three is a departure because it's in the past. Right. But it fills in a lot of blanks, too, because you see a lot of these characters when they're younger. Okay. And uh, you kind of see some of the beginnings of some yeah. of your favorite characters. So after, I mean, once you play them all, we can talk even more. But mm -hmm. I, I would be hesitant to answer too many of your questions okay. right now. But... The thing is, most of these questions will not be answered until four. Okay. So you'll have to wait. Yeah. Three, I think you're really going to enjoy. It's, it's, whenever I talk about them, it's like one and three are like this. Okay. And then the rest are a little bit. Yeah. I mean, five is actually close behind, but mm -hmm. two and four are always a little bit lower. Two has a lot. If you, two is like 60% cutscenes. I mean, these cutscenes were so long. I'm just like, hang on But four I like it. is that to the max. Yeah. Where it's like, there are a lot of cutscenes in 4, but it's a lot of story that fills in stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's nonsense, just like 2. Well, that's the thing. I think some of the cutscenes, like, I love the cut, for example, this, in the first game with Sniper Wolf. Like, I love that cutscene. That was so cool. But then the freaking, like, there's just some cutscenes, I think, in this game. Especially the stuff between Jack and Rose, Raiden and Rose. Like, that nonsense. And then the freaking thing with, like... Otacon. Like, I, that was just like, yeah. I, my sister. <laughs> That's a famous, like, what the fuck is going on I, like, situation. My sister heard, like, she always, she, she mentioned it, like, I was downstairs and I don't know what she just heard. Oh, come on. Like, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> yeah, it is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. But, like I said, these games are always riddled with some of that. Yeah. Some of the weird nonsense because. That's just who Kojima is. Yeah. He you take the good with the bad. Yeah. And even in the first one, think about like some of the shit that Otacon was saying in the beginning. He when he peed his pants or when he was like mm, or, reminds me of my Japanese or anime. with Meryl and the boobs and the guard and stuff. It's like <laughs> yeah. you gotta remember yeah. that Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of it is really nonsense. Yeah. But Alright, I'm excited. Like so I said, you're, I just... you're down on two. Let's see what you think of three. Love one. One's one of my favorites. I really. I'm sorry, Dan. That 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 cool where he's freaking out thing was really awesome. But I don't know. As a whole, I, I have some really. Well, the whole point of this whole some really hard you playing through too. the series is it is a series. Yeah. You know what I mean. So it's like you're allowed to say I don't like that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry too. And two was a, you know what the problem is? Two was a slog to play through. Yeah. And then like the payoff for me wasn't. It was cool, but it wasn't like. Yeah. Huh. Sorry, too. To each his own. All right. That concludes Metal Gear Corner with Dan for the week. I, um, too. Yeah, we'll catch up with you in three one of these days. Yeah. Uh, next, I just want to do a quick look ahead. We've been doing this uh, segment for the past couple of weeks uh, where we look ahead to E3 2018. Um, and this week, we're going to look at Microsoft, what they have. Let's we see did, what we got. We did Sony. We did Nintendo. Let's do Microsoft. Um, things that we are certain of, there's not a lot that we're certain of as far as Microsoft at their showing. Um, we know for sure Below is going to be there. It's the game by Cappy. Uh, they showed this at the launch of the Xbox One. And it still hasn't come years, out. How many years ago was that? That was 2013. Um, 2012 or 2013 even. Uh, but... Still hasn't come out. They've been working hard on it. I've heard good things. I always love the way that game looks. If you don't know, it's like a it's like a top down, like original Zelda style game, but it is a super hard like mechanic space. Like you know, people compare it to people say it's Zelda One meets Dark Souls. It's mm -hmm. like the idea, right? So sounds really cool. I've always loved like the look of that game, though. It looks so good. So. Excited to see that one. Uh, Crackdown 3 will definitely, definitely be there. Um, again, they've been talking about this game for a while. It hasn't come out yet. We're still waiting on, you know, some more news from it. But um, some question marks. So the one that I'm going to bring up now is Splinter Cell because we haven't had a Splinter Cell in a long time. Mm -hmm. What was the last one? Was Conviction the last one? Uh, yeah, there was one that was on. It was around the launch of Wii U, I remember. Mm. Um, but 
we haven't had Splinter Cell in a while. We had already kind of been thinking about Splinter Cell because in Ghost Recon Wildlands, um, in Ghost Recon Wildlands, they basically um, have a Sam Fisher like DLC where like he comes in and whatever. And I know Splinter Cell isn't Microsoft exclusive anymore like it used to be. It was always just on Xbox back in the day. Um, but we put it in here because. You know, it's it's associated with Why not? Yeah. similar to why we would put like Final Fantasy and stuff with PlayStation. Um, so that listing came out um, of I think it was from like Amazon Canada or something. I forget what it was, but uh, no, it was a store, Walmart Canada. That's what it was. Walmart Canada put out. They basically had a listing of a bunch of games that were unannounced online and someone took a screenshot and said what the hell is all this and at first people were like ah is that real is it fake mm -hmm. they just kind of like prophesizing whatever and um then they announced rage 2 early once that got once that came out so we're kind of thinking okay maybe all these are real so that new splinter cell was on that list it's very likely that's going to be um gears 5 was also on that list gears okay. 4 5 um so they did one, two, three as a trilogy. Then they did Judgment, and nobody liked Judgment. Now they just started a new trilogy. Four came out three years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. Gears of War four. I gotta look up the date, um, but I know it was a while while back. Um, is it the same? Uh, it's the same main oh, geez, guy. It wasn't like his, that long ago. Isn't it his son or something like that? What I forget. Is that true? Twenty sixteen. Shit. What was it? It was like his son, right? Or something like that? Or Yeah. Yeah, it was. It, it was a whole thing. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I mm -hmm. think they did some interesting things to set up some storylines. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I, yeah. I think it was kind of so-so. Similar to Halo 5, actually. Yeah, I was never crazy about the... I mean, the... I like the Gears of War games. Gears but, games. you know, they're not anything to write home about, really. They're very fun to play. Similar to Halo, in, in my opinion. Yeah. But, um... Gears 5 was on that list. I could see them announcing that. But it is time for Halo 6 because Halo 5 came out, I think, 2015, the okay. year before Gears 4. Um, and they're doing a similar thing where they're doing a new series. Um, so, Gears 5, Halo 6, which one gets announced? Maybe both. Yeah, that'd be a big year for Microsoft. Yeah, I doubt that both will come out. Yeah soon but they might announce both be excited for any of them would you be excited for any of them uh it depends i yeah, again awesome. like i said gears of war 4 like i really liked the original trilogy when mm -hmm. they came out you know looking back it was like whatever halo loved the originals halo 5 and gears 4 didn't really do it for me yeah you know and it's not that they're bad games they're just not the same, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know. We'll see. They could, you know, they're obviously putting a lot of work in, into them, so um, we'll see what happens with those. As far as others, uh, I'm sure that they're going to have some new IPs and stuff like that because this list is pretty light pretty small, of what yeah. we even think they could possibly be showing. Um, so I'm excited to see some of the question marks more yeah. than anything um, because, you know, they put out Cuphead. You know, was is only on Xbox. So like, if we have yeah, but some... that was for a while though. They were talking about that game for a long time. Yeah, but I'm saying like, if we get an announcement of some nice new indie games, you know, Ori, Ori in the Black Forest sequel is coming out. Oh right. Yeah, they had announced that already. Ori in the. I'm still waiting for that game to be released on PlayStation Four. They haven't done that. I don't think it's gonna happen. But... They talked about it though when it came out. I don't think so. It makes me angry. I think those are funded by Microsoft. I don't think they're ever going anywhere. But those are excellent, excellent games. I would be very excited for new Ori, which I know they already announced, but I'm saying games like that, mm -hmm. like Ori, like Cuphead, State of Decay 2 will have already been out, which I'm very excited for. That's only in a week or two. Um, but yeah, we'll see what else is from Microsoft at E3. Uh, but that's all we have for now, and that's going to do it for the episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Shelby, as Shelby, always. As always. Uh, you're the best, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. What's up guys, it's Dan from Circle Back. Uh, I'm just here to let you know, you can find everything that we do at circlebackgaming.com. If you just want the podcast, we're on iTunes. If you just want the video, we're on YouTube. So, catch us either place. Thanks.